contracts and it relaxes until all your food passes. This process is called peristalsis, you see. The esophageal sphincter is where all consent will linger. It's the doorway that will open into me. When the sphincter lets food pass, it closes tight and pretty fast so your stomach juice and food remain in me. I am your stomach.
our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I am your trachea. I'm about four to five inches long. An important part of you, so you'll learn in this song. When you touch your neck in the center gently, and you feel those bumpy ridges, now you'll know it's just me. Also called your windpipe, I'm one inch in diameter wide. I begin below your voice box and in that your bronchi. Now I can't from the nose and mouth to your lungs Then exhale carbon dioxide When your breathing is done And when you inhale I slightly widen and lengthen Then return to my normal size When your exhale does end I even protect you From foreign bodies you can't see With a sticky mucus layer In the lumen in me When foreign substances are trapped there excreted through phlegm or swallowed in the esophagus to your stomach within i am your trachea i'm about four to five inches long an important part of you so you'll learn in this song let's talk about my parts now that my functions are clear we'll name off my anatomy as they do appear the rings on me are tracheal cartilage about 20 of these rings that are separate on me the reason they are separate and not joined as one is so your trachea can flex till your breathing is done then we move to the space between the cartilage here it's your annular ligaments that do appear these ligaments are connective tissue holding the trachea together yes inside you inside the trachea is lined with a smooth tissue it's called the mucosa and this fact is very true then the lumen is next the hollow channel airway lined with hair like projections called cilia that sway the cilia trap the particles we discussed the lumen cells and ducts. I am your trachea. I'm about four to five inches long. An important part of you, so you'll learn in this song. I am your trachea. I'm about four to five inches long. An important part of you, so you'll learn in this song. Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below! Now I'm your rib cage! I keep your inside safe! Attach to your spine, your vital organs I encase! Now I'm your rib cage! Made up of 24 bones! I expand when you breathe, and your chest is my home! Let's start by looking at all these bones in me! They wrap around your body as you plainly see This is the body of the sternum front and center on stage The bottom part of the breastbone in everyone's rib cage. Manubrium's the top part of the sternum on me The xiphoid process is the final bone in the sternum family From the top of the sternum that I've already explained Are seven ribs on either side of me with an honest name They are called the true in the human body They're also named the sternal ribs Of your chest cavity Numb your rib cage I keep your inside safe Attach to your spine Your vital organs I encase Numb your rib cage Made up of 24 bones I expand when you breathe And your chest is my home The remaining 5 pairs of ribs That complete the bones in me Are located at the bottom of my cage I guarantee these five pairs of flat bones are called the false ribs you see Because their cartilage doesn't reach the sternum directly and Coastal cartilage is what connects these bones to the front of me This cartilage is transparent and 
is called the hyaline When you look at the back of the human body You'll notice that all the ribs connect to the spine And this is key At the head of each rib The radiate ligaments attach The rib cage to the thoracic vertebrae That's how they latch Back to the front of your body These two bones are clavicles They attach the scapula to the sternum And play an important role Numb your rib cage Keep your inside safe, attach to your spine, your vital organs I encase. I'm your rib cage, made up of 24 bones. I expand when you breathe, and your chest is my home. Two of the vital organs in which it's my job to protect are the heart and the lungs. Without my protection, they'd be wrecked. I'm one of the strongest structures that does exist in you, so take care of your rib cage and everything that you do. Numb your rib cage. I keep your inside safe. Attach to your spine, your vital organs I encase. Numb your rib cage. Made up of 24 bones. I expand when you breathe, and your chest is my home. Numb your rib cage. I keep your inside safe. Attach to your spine, your vital organs I encase. Numb your rib cage. Made up of 24 bones. I expand when you just is my home shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters I'm a muscular sack I'm called your bladder I carry urine from your body straight down into the potty I'm a muscular sack, I'm called your bladder Your kidneys make your water waste and have stored in just one place Your bladder is the size of a pear when empty And is made of all the parts that you're about to see Here's a picture of the bladder's anatomy Located in the interior pelvis happy The peritoneum covers it's the serous membrane and I'm glad you're learning all this The ureters bring urine waste from the kidneys Smooth muscles move it down using peristalsis you see Urine enters the bladder through ureteral openings And fills the bladder up like a leaky ground spring The detrusor muscle controls the bladder's fluid flow Lined with inner mucosa encased in outer membrane though The urethral sphincter Muscular sack, I'm called your bladder. I carry urine from your body straight down into the body. I'm a muscular sack, I'm called your bladder. Your kidneys make your water waste and have stored in just one place. Your kidneys filter all the blood in your body. If you want to learn more, watch my video on kidneys. When water waste separates from the kidneys, it will exit. Your ureters start the process of peristalsis. This process moves the urine to where it should be stored. To the bladders where it's headed, I hope you're not bored. When the urine reaches your ureteral opening, the detrusor muscle relaxes while the bladder's filling. When your bladder is full, it stretches its walls, and stretch receptors tell your brain the urine must fall. The brain tells the detrusor muscle to contract while the internal urethral sphincter opens, that's a fact. The external urethral sphincter relaxes as well and the urine exits your body making you feel swell. I'm a muscular sack, I'm called your bladder. I carry urine from your body straight down into the body. I'm a muscular sack, I'm called your bladder. Your kidneys make your water waste and have stored in just one place. Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below. I'm your larynx. I'm the reason you can talk and the reason you can sing. A hollow muscular organ. Say Let's look at your larynx Gently rub under your chin When you feel that pointy bump That's the area I'm in Let's look deeper into me You'll see my anatomy My three unpaired cartilage Are the first you're gonna see First the epiglottis Then you have the thyroid Third but it is not the least Here you see the cross 
How my muscles you'll detect The thyroarytenoid And the cricothyroid Then we have the lateral Cricoarytenoid Oblique and transverse and posterior Cricoarytenoid Are in the back of your larynx That's where they were deployed Last we have the hoid bone It's not part of your larynx Thyrohyoid membranes attached So they're linked I'm your larynx I'm the reason you can talk And the reason you can sing Muscular organ, sit and learn, I'll do my thing My main job's to help you breathe, I keep your trachea real clear From foreign matter down your throat, so don't you choke, that is my fear So when you're eating tasty food or drinking something really good Your epiglottis closes tight over your airway like a hood And when you wanna talk or sing, your laryngeal muscles make your voice by vibrating Take a look. 
description below. Take a walk with me to learn about the 26 bones that make up each of your feet. I have a bunch of joints, yes, 33. Your two feet make up one quarter of the bones in the human body. The foot you see here is broken up into three parts. That's what we'll talk about first. That's where this lesson starts. Here's the hind foot made of the ankle and heel. It's composed of two of the seven tarsal bones in which I'll reveal. Then you see the midfoot, which forms the foot's arch. It's made of five tarsal bones to absorb shock when you march. Here's the forefoot made of five toes called phalanges attached to the Skull 
I said And two maxillae, one on each side of the upper jaw and your head The vomer bone joins the ethmoid bone to create the nasal septum in you Two palatine bones and the maxillae complete the hard palate, it's true The two nasal bones form the bridge of your nose Two zygomatic bones form the shape of your cheekbones as this picture shows Two inferior nasal conchae are located in your as well. Two lacrimal bones run lateral to the maxillary bones, they're swell. I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones. I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home. I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head. A framework of boner cartilage, this knowledge I spread. I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones. I protect the all-important it calls me its home I'm your skull I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of boner cartilage This knowledge I spread Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel Click the link in the description below The diaphragm, that's what I am An anatomical landmark that separates the chest from the abdomen Where is a diaphragm? Let's take a look and see It's below the lungs in the lower thoracic cavity On the floor of the thoracic cavity That contain your heart and lungs in the roof of the abdominal cavity That holds some vital organs I'm made up of muscle This is the central tendon broken into three parts The right middle and left leaflet is a tendon This work of art Attached to the first three lumbar vertebrae and their intervertebral discs Is the right cruise, it's a tendon Thanks for learning about this The left cruise is only attached to the bodies of the first two lumbar vertebrae These tendons form a tether for the muscular contraction in me I'm mostly made up of muscle that you're seeing now Let's take a look to see what passes through center in which I'm proud. This is the vena cava, a large vein that runs through me carrying deoxygenated blood into the heart from your body. Here you see the aorta, the body's largest artery. It supplies oxygenated blood to the circulatory system. See, what's also important to notice is the esophagus. It connects the throat to the stomach in all of us. The diaphragm, that's what I am. A dome-shaped sheet of muscle used in respiration The diaphragm, that's what I am An anatomical landmark that separates the chest from the abdomen When you inhale oxygen while taking any kind of breath Your diaphragm flattens and expands your ribcage before it rests Then you exhale ridding the body of carbon dioxide The diaphragm goes back to its dome shape now resting inside now I'm attached to you in more places Attached to your xiphoid process, it's part of your sternum And to the cartilage of ribs 7 through 12 Learning is so fun Thoracic diaphragm is another name I go by Breathe deep when you're singing about me now Goodbye The diaphragm, that's what I am I'm a dome-shaped sheet of muscle used in respiration The diaphragm, that's what I am An anatomical Separates the chest from the abdomen. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I am your spleen. You will learn what this means. I am purple, five inches long, and I'm shaped like a bean. I'm your spleen. 
will learn what this means. I produce antibodies and I keep your blood clean. I'm the spleen, the largest organ in the lymphatic system. You don't need me, but if removed from your body, you'll be more prone to infection. The spleen is located under the rib cage above the stomach here in the upper left quadrant of the abdomen, the space I share. What's the anatomy of the spleen? Yeah, the spleen's part. I will teach you this now while you look at this splenic work of art. Here you see the splenic hilum and the gastric surface. There's the pancreatic and renal surface. Now repeat this. The splenic artery supplies oxygenated blood to the spleen and the splenic vein drains the blood from the spleen if you know what I mean. Let's take a look inside the spleen to learn more of its parts. There are two main types of tissue in me and that's where we'll start. The first main tissue is called the red pulp. Of this I will tell it filters blood of antigens, microorganisms, and defective red blood cells. The second main tissue is called white pulp. We'll view this as well. It's part of the immune system, mainly made up of white blood cells. The trabeculae of the spleen is the framework within, which is attached to the capsule. It surrounds the spleen and it's thin. Vascular sinusoids are white vessels that drain into pulp veins. We'll learn how this all works, but first let's sing again. I am your spleen. You will learn what this means I am purple five inches long And I'm shaped like a bean I'm your spleen You will learn what this means I produce antibodies And I keep your blood clean All the functions of your spleen Are really complex But I'll explain the basic functions In the next few steps Red blood cells last 120 days Delivering oxygen to your body When they're damaged Entering the spleen recycled is what they be. Healthy cells flow through, but those that are in their unhealthy stages are broken down by large white blood cells that are called macrophages. This all happens in the red pulp tissue that we talked about. These macrophages main job is to filter all the damaged cells out. These old red blood cells are turned into conjugated bilirubin, which is excreted through bile out of your body then. The white pulp consists entirely of lymphoid tissue. Here I will explain the basics of what it does for you when you get sick or have some sort of nasty disease the lymphoid tissue within the white pulp sets your body at ease it creates white blood cells to fight off the sickness and then it also makes antibodies that bind to specific antigens both white blood cells and antibodies fight sickness and disease enabling them to be cleared from the circulation in your body the spleen stores up to a cup of blood for your safety ready to be released if there's a significant loss of blood you see many platelets are also stored within the blood in the spleen to help form blood clots to prevent further blood loss if you know what I mean please take care of your body so you don't get sick and if you do the spleen will be there to help you fix it I am your spleen you will learn what this means I am purple five inches long and I'm shaped like a bean I'm your spleen you will learn what this means I produce antibodies and I keep your blood clean Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel Click the link in the description below This is a heart size comparison of animals in this world in which we all are one We'll start with a mouse and end at a blue whale Each heart has to beat all day long, we'll show you in scale I'm a mouse heart with dimensions of 10 to 4.2 millimeters That's roughly 16th of an inch and that is true My heart rate's 310 to 840 beats per minute Let's see how many
thousand pound horse has a ten pound heart. It's so great. The heart rate of a horse ranges from 28 to 48 beats per minute. At 28 beats per minute, I never quit. Per hour, I can beat 1600 times or 40,000 times per day. I hope you liked my rhyme. A giraffe's heart is about two feet long and weighs about 25 pounds as you learned in this song. My heart rate is around 40 to 90 beats per minute. If I'm relaxing in the sun, eating leaves, I'm trying to finish. At 40 beats per minute, I can beat 2400 times per hour or 57,000 times per day. I'm a muscle of power. The average weight of an elephant's heart is 26 to 46 pounds. That produces enough energy for it to get around. If I beat 30 times a minute, that's 1800 times per hour. True, which is 43,000 times per day till my life is through. A blue whale has the largest heart in the animal kingdom, weighing around 400 pounds. I beat like a drum. I'm roughly the size of a bumper car at any amusement park. With a low heart rate of two beats per minute, I hit my mark. At two beats per minute, I beat 120 times per hour strong. That's 2,800 times per day while I swim along. This is a heart size comparison of animals in this world in which we all are one. We'll start with a mouse and end at a blue whale. Each heart has to beat all day long. We'll show you in scale. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. The lymphatic system is a network of tissues and organs that rid the body of toxins, wasting unwanted material to the lymphatic system's main job is to transport the fluid. Lymph it contains white blood cells that fight infection through the body within. The major parts of the lymph tissue are in the marrow of bone and the spleen, thymus gland tonsils, and in your lymph nodes, the heart. Lungs, intestines, liver, and your skin also contain lymphatic tissue. Let's see how it works from within. Your body's made of watery liquid that fills the spaces between the cells. This liquid's called interstitial fluid. How it becomes lymph fluid, I will tell. Lymph fluids formed when interstitial fluids collected through lymph capillaries. Lymph carries viruses, bacteria, and waste material. That's scary. Lymph fluids transported through lymph lymphatic vessels to your lymph nodes. Your lymph nodes are the place where inspections of your lymph take place, you know. Lymphocytes are your immune cells that inspect your lymph. If your lymphocytes find a virus or disease, your lymph nodes blow up like a blimp. Your lymphocytes may call in help from resident macrophages here. Macrophages will attack the unwanted virus that appeared when the lymph fluid in the lymph nodes are all clean. The lymph continues to flow through the lymphatic vessels if you know what I mean. Clean lymph fluid re-enters at the end of the subclavian vein to be mixed in with your blood cells once again. So take care of your body and make sure you clean your hands. Please eat organic fruits and vegetables if you can. The lymphatic system is a network of tissues and organs that rid the body of toxins wasting unwanted material to the lymphatic system's main job is to transport the fluid lymph it contains white blood cells that fight infection through the body within each lymph node is surrounded by a fibrous capsule i'd say which extends inside the lymph node to form trabeculae Afferent lymphatic vessels allow lymph fluid to enter lymph nodes, but when lymph fluid leaves, it uses efferent lymphatic vessels shown. See, these valves prevent backflow of lymph fluid on track, so the fluid only flows in one direction and doesn't go back. The depressed area of the surface of the lymph node is called hilum. The nodules of these odd-looking shaped things, now we're done. The lymph 
lymphatic system is a network of tissues and organs that rid the body of toxins waste and unwanted material to the lymphatic system's main job is to transport the fluid lymph it contains white blood cells that fight infection through the body within go to the new klt anatomy channel click the link in the description below I am a myocyte, your muscles are made up of me. Here's some of the 650 muscles in the human body. We'll start with the deltoids that sit on the shoulders of your arms. There are three parts to your deltoid that I'll teach you with some charm. The interior fibers are on the front side of you, while the lateral fibers sit on the top of the shoulders, that's two. The third part's called posterior that sits on your name 
Melatonin is a hormone I famously secrete directly into your body through your bloodstream. Melatonin has a job which is crucial you will see. Controlling circadian rhythms to wake or keep you asleep. I am made up of secretory cells. These are called pinealocytes. I do tell. Pinealocytes secrete melatonin within a 24 hour cycle. That makes up one full day. I keep them flowing well. I secrete melatonin highest in the middle of the night to keep you asleep until the first daylight. Melatonin levels decrease when it's closer to dawn and drops down during the day so you don't yawn. The schedule of melatonin releases regulated by signals from the retina from the light outside. These signals from the retina travel to a nucleus in us called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Then that signal travels to the pineal gland. The nucleus and the pineal work hard hand in hand. The suprachiasmatic nucleus has a main function. It's to control circadian rhythms to keep you having fun. The suprachiasmatic nucleus also uses melatonin, I say, as a signal to know the time of day. When melatonin levels are at their highest in the hours of the night when it is the darkest that signals the circadian rhythms to be in a nocturnal stage which should keep you asleep until the break of day then your melatonin levels drop dramatically to keep you awake during the day you see your pineal glands important so please take care of me so you can enjoy life while rested and carefree I'm the pineal gland located in the midline of your brain A small endocrine gland and now you know my name I'm the pineal gland, a ductless gland that secretes A hormone called melatonin directly to the bloodstream Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel Click the link in the description below Come take a journey with me inside the human body Who knows what we'll learn of our anatomy Here's a quick look about the systems we'll see In our voyage we will learn about biology I'm a cell, your body's made up of me There's more than 200 different types of cells in the human body Atoms and molecules are what created me Then I made all of the systems you're about to hear and see There's the nervous system, it has an important job too It sends signals from and to the brain for all that you do The circulatory system is where all your blood flows It carries oxygen and nutrients to where it should go the respiratory system is what you use to breathe It carries oxygen to all the cells that your body needs Come take a journey with me inside the human body Who knows what we'll learn of our anatomy Here's a quick look about the systems we'll see In our voyage we will learn about biology your immune system fights off a lot of disease It detects when you're sick, then makes you feel healthy The digestive system takes all the food that you eat Then extracts the vitamins and nutrients that you need Your skeletal system is made up of bones Held together by connective tissue so they don't roam the muscular system has three types you see Skeletal, smooth, and cardiac make up the three Come take a journey with me inside the human body Who knows what we'll learn of our anatomy Here's a quick look about the systems we'll see In our voyage we will learn about biology Our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters.
I'm your brain, part of the central nervous system. Your cranium's my home, and if you want to learn, then listen. I'm the boss of all the functions in your body. I weigh about three pounds, but I'm the leader of the party. The cerebrum controls your thinking and your muscles. It also stores all memories. Without it, you would struggle. The left cerebrum controls the right side of the body, and the right cerebrum tiny the cerebellum controls your posture and your balance the coordination of your movement is also its talent it's located in the lower back of your brain it is rounded in structure as i've gone on to explain i'm your brain part of the central nervous system your cranium's my home and if you want to learn then listen i'm the boss of all the functions in your body i weigh up Your brain stem is at the bottom of your brain, connecting brain to spinal cord to form a neural signal train. Your brain stem maintains vital control of your heart and lungs. It controls important reflexes to make sure your body runs. Your pineal gland produces all your precious melatonin, which can help you sleep at night and makes you wake up in the morning. I'm your brain, part of the central nervous system. Your cranium's my home. And I'm the boss of all the functions in your body. I weigh about three pounds, but I'm the leader of the party. Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below. I am your large intestine, though I'm shorter than your small. I'm called your large intestine due to my expanded walls. I'm made up of ten different parts, all connected into one. We'll start at the tip of your appendix, attached to your cecum. The next part of my tubular shape is the ascending colon Which leads to the hepatic flexure so you're learning in this song Your transverse colon runs across your entire abdomen Then turns at your splenic flexure onto the descending colon your curved as shaped sigmoid colon leads to your rectum Which is where your fecal matter meets your anus in your bum I am your large intestine though I'm shorter than your small I'm called your large intestine due to my expanded walls let me tell you how I work and a little bit about me I'm only five feet in length but I'm wide which is why I'm called Large C My most important job is absorbing water from your chime If I didn't perform this function you'd have loose stools all the time Millions of bacteria do live inside of me an important one is E. coli its job is very key E. coli breaks down all the charm that your body can digest and produces vitamin K that regulates blood clotting at its best another important job that your large intestine has to play yeah, it excretes all your waste to help your body stay healthy. I am your large intestine, though I'm shorter than your small. I'm called your large intestine due to my expanded walls. Shop our new store merch. 
and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. What's that taste? Well, it's your tongue, a muscular organ in everyone. I'm kind of rough with lots of bumps. I always work hard to get my job done. Your tongue is covered in a pink tissue called mucosa. Its main job is to protect deeper tissue when you gnaw. The rough parts of your tongue are called the lingual papillae. They are the small bumps that store taste buds so you enjoy food all day. There are four different types of your tongue's papillae. They're named the filiform, foliate, fungiform, and circumvallate. The frenum is the tether of the front bottom of tongues that hold your tongue in place so your mouth can move freely while it runs. The back of your tongue is anchored by the hyoid bone. The tongue is vital for many things I will show. What's that taste? Well, it's your tongue, a muscular organ in everyone. I'm kind of rough with lots of bumps. I always work hard to get my job done. The muscles in your tongue are a few we will discuss. The stylo, hyo, and genio all end in glossus. Then the genio and stylo, hyoideus. Learning these muscles of your tongue, yeah, it is a must. Your tongue's main job's to help you chew and swallow all your food. It also helps you speak all words to express your present mood. The common amount of taste that your tongue can recognize are the four. I will tell you it may come as a surprise. Sweet, sour, bitter, and salty are the four. But sometimes you taste a fifth called umami I adore. What's that taste? Well, it's your tongue, a muscular organ in everyone. I'm kind of rough with lots of bumps. I always work hard to get my job done. When you bite into your food, the chemicals from foods release and sinks into the taste papilla to the taste buds that run deep. Sensory cells transform chemicals into nerve signals that are sent into the brain through the nerve fibers they do go. When the signals reach your brain, that information is passed through your cranial nerves to the brain stem really fast. Your medulla oblongata takes all those signals and sends them to the limbic and cortical systems you should know. Perception and emotion are then formed for what you ate, then mixed with smells and texture, which create this thing called taste. What's that taste? Well, it's your tongue, a muscular organ in everyone. I'm kind of rough with lots of bumps. I always work hard to get my job done. Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below. We are not kidding, see, we are your kidneys. The upper abdominal is where we will be. The right and left kidneys do all sorts of cool things you'll see. Please pay close attention, this lesson is free. One fact about your kidneys is we filter all your blood so free. Through the neutrons, there's about one million in each kidney. The kidney shape just like a bean, it's about the size of the fist you see. And its top is covered by your adrenal gland. The adrenal gland's made of two parts, a cortex and the medulla. These parts produce certain hormones your body needs. The renal vein and artery are what bring blood to and from a seat. They're attached to us right near where the ureters be. Kidneys create hormones that tell the body to make more red blood cells. They also regulate your liver. Into kidneys through your renal artery 
shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. We're your teeth, we're your teeth, your digestive system star. We hope you listen well and you learn just who we are. When you're a newborn, maybe you may have natal teeth. This only occurs in one in two to three thousand babies. A child's mouth has two rows of teeth on the bottom and the top. But you only see twenty before the adult teeth make the swap. You'll have thirty-two adult teeth by the young age of thirteen. But there are only twenty-eight without your wisdom teeth, you see. Teeth are part of the skeletal system, though they are not bone. We play a key role in digestion to chew foods while we're grown. We're your teeth, we're your teeth, your digestive system star. We hope you listen well. Across the back of your abdomen I am your pancreas 
Yes, I'm about six inches long. I sit behind your stomach across the back of your abdomen. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. I am your gallbladder. I am a sack shaped organ you see. I am a gallbladder. Your liver stores its bile in me. My surface is smooth to the touch. I am green in color, now you know that much. And I have several parts. The right and left hepatic ducts are where we will start. Here's the common hepatic duct. Then the cystic duct sits where it is tucked. Then we move to the neck. Which is attached to the body and the rounded fundus To the common bile duct And the pancreatic duct that is what I'm made of I am your gallbladder I am a sac shaped organ you see I am a gallbladder Your liver stores its bile in me I act as a reservoir By storing the bile that your liver does for This bile is made and used To break down fats from all eaten foods When your food leaves your stomach It passes through the duodenum Now that is a fact That is when I began to work Passing the digestive bile through the common bile duct When this bile is out of me I flatten like a deflated balloon, you see Then the liver, it does the rest And when you're done digesting food, that's when I ingest All the new bile to store That the body waits to use, that is what I am for I am your gallbladder a sac shaped organ you see I am a gallbladder Your liver stores its bile in me I am your gallbladder I am a sac shaped organ you see I am a gallbladder Your liver stores its bile in me channel. Click the link in the description below. You have a spine. It's what you see. And if you want to learn my parts, watch this video of me. I am your spinal column I'm made of lots of bones. These bones are called your vertebrae. Collectively, your spine's their home. The first group we'll look at is the cervical curvature It's made up of seven vertebrae, we'll learn them I am sure The first vertebrae we will discuss are C1 and C2 Also known as the atlas and the axis inside of you The atlas joins the base of the skull you call your head It's job to support head weight, without it you'd flop instead The C2 axis allows your C1 and your skull to move about in most directions with Without it, life would be dull. C3 through C7 are there to support your head. Let's move on to the next group after the chorus is said. You have a spine, it's what you see. And if you want to learn my parts, watch this video of me. The next group of your spine we will be looking at is the thoracic curvatures, 12 vertebrae intact. Each vertebrae we see begins with the letter T. The T stands for thoracic, let's take a look and see. T1 through T12 are bigger than the group in your neck. Because the spine supports more weight, the further down we check. 
At the bottom of this group begins the lumbar curvatures. Five vertebrae start with the letter L, you'll learn, I'm sure. L1 through L5 brings you down to the sacrum. The fuse bone between your hips and the pelvis it becomes. Below that is your cossex, also called the tailbone. It's a triangular shaped fuse vertebrae, you know. You have a spine, it's what you see. And if you want to learn my parts, watch this video of me. There are 23 discs in the human spine. The intervertebral discs is their name you will find. These discs help you flex the hard vertebrae bone. Between most of your vertebrae, they are shown. They are flexible discs that look like tires on your car. The outer rings the annulus and the nucleus center isn't far. Helping you bend and flex is the disc's main job. And running through the center spine is the spinal cord at large. It connects your brain to all your body's nerves. So take care of your spine because that's what your body deserves. You have a spine, it's what you see. And if you want to learn my parts, watch this video of me. You have a spine, it's what you see. And if you want to learn my parts, watch this video of me. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters.